guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. Uh, the idea of a five by five is very simple. It's one of my favorite videos of the week. The idea is that I take five subjects. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. Uh, there's a countdown timer at the bottom of the screen. When the countdown reaches zero, I move on to the next topic. It is quick, it is snappy. You never know what you're gonna get. And one of the things that I do with 5 by 5s fairly often is I, I talk about a particular subject. So I've done uh, special 5 by 5 episodes in the past on people like Jay Sankey and, and people like Paul Harris. Well, I'm gonna be doing a 5 by 5 special today on one of my favorite creators. And uh, my favorite, one of my favorite card magicians is Woody Aragon. Uh, I have his book here, one of his books. This is his first book, uh, a book in English, part of this 5x5. Five five. I'm actually going to be reviewing this book. Um, and you know what? As, as amazing as Woody is, a lot of people aren't really that familiar with his material. So I'm going to be performing some of Woody's favorite tricks, some of his more unknown tricks that a lot of people might not know. Uh, my goal is to get more people to buy this book because this book is absolutely fantastic. Now, if you don't know who Woody Aragon is, he's from Spain. The first time I met him was at a uh, at Macmillan's Day. He was in the competition. It was just after I reviewed this book on the Wizard Potter review, way, way back. I gave it a great review and I met him a few weeks later and uh, I, I think he won the competition that year. And he's a great guy, he's very friendly, he knows literally thousands of tricks. His mentor was um, uh, Juan Tamaritz, he's very close with people like Danny D. Ortiz, so if you like their style, you'll like Woody's style. Um, he actually created one of the most popular tricks for virtual shows over the last 18 months that I've seen. I've been to lots of different virtual shows and, and Woody created the trick that almost every virtual magician has done, as far as I, I can see. So yeah, uh, he's a great guy. Um, and I'm going to be performing on this 5x5 five five some of the material that you might not have seen him do. Now, he's released so much magic over the years that uh, if this is popular and you guys want to see another 5x5 five five on Woody, he's got so many routines, uh, so many tricks. Now, Woody is really well known for doing stack deck work. Um, but I'm not including any routines with Memdex or Stebbins or anything like that uh, with this uh, with this 5x5. Five five. I am, however, going to be using material specifically out of the book in English, which is available for all good magic dealers. It's just recently been reprinted. And the first segment that we're going to look at, which is coming up in a second, I'm going to be performing one of my favourite Woody Aragon tricks, and it's called a Clockwork Woody. Now, this is his variation on using the clock force, but he's done it in a very different way. Rather than just doing the clock force and knowing the card that the person uh, picks, he's combined it with a one ahead principle. So um, he combines one ahead with the clock force principle and he includes a kick of finish that you just don't see coming. And this is a perfect example of his work, which is why I wanted to do this first of all, because when you see this, you just realize just how genius he is. Woody is actually a really a, a accomplished sleight of hand magician. He can do the hard stuff and he can do it really well. But a lot of his routines are almost self-working or very, very easy. And they rely on subtleties um, because he understands the value of presentation. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to give you a full performance of Clockwork Woody. It's an amazing trick for so many different places. It's great for bar magic. It's great for restaurant magic. It's great for a parlor show. Uh, people just don't see it coming, especially if you ring it in and you do it as the final routine at the end of a card set. Let's have a look at this performance right now of Clockwork Woody. So I've got Sarah behind the camera again. Sarah, I'm going to show you some amazing mentalism, okay? I'm going to try and predict the future using two pieces of paper and using a pack of playing cards. Now, before we start anything, uh, I'm going to show you these cards and I'm going to give them a shuffle. Just so you know, they are well and truly mixed up. I'm just going to uh, shuffle them like this. And before I actually square them up, I want you to see, is that a really good shuffle? Yeah. You can see that the cards are shuffled together. If you were here in front of the camera, I'd let you do that yourself. But we are using a genuine shuffle deck of cards. Is that fair? Yeah. Now, this trick is all about time. Um, there are 12 hours in a day. One uh, the, the, uh, there are 12 hours to go from 1 o'clock through to 12 o'clock. What I want you to do is think of an hour of the day. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Think of an hour of a day. You got it? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to make a prediction here. 
I'm going to make a prediction and I'm going to make this prediction before we do anything. So I want you to see that I have committed myself here. So I've made a prediction. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't want you to see what it is, but I think I've got the hour of the day. Now I'm going to squidge this up into a little ball and so you know I can't manipulate it or anything. You can see the card box is empty. I'm going to pop it there inside the card box. Is that fair? Yeah. Now, uh, we're going to try and do something. I need you to commit to that hour because I've made my prediction now. So we're going to try and do something. I'm going to dribble down the deck as I do. Just say stop. Stop. There? Yeah. Perfect. So you want to stop here? Yeah. I'm going to take 12 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Whatever hour you're thinking of, I want you to take that many cards and put them somewhere I can't get to them. You can hold on to them or, or sit on them or put them under your phone or something. Uh, so if you're thinking of one o'clock, you put one card under your phone or, or away where I can't see it and then put the rest back on top of the pack. I'll put the pack there. Okay. That way, that's going to commit you to that time. Okay? So just take those cards, hold them face down. Whatever time you're thinking of, take that many cards. Just hold on to them so I can't see them. I am looking away at the moment. And then just put the rest on top of the pack. Okay, and then tell me when you're done. Are we done? Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Good. Okay, so as this trick is all about time, I'm going to take 12 cards. I'm going to make a clock. So we have uh, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah? Yeah. What I'm going to do now is in a minute, you're going to look at the card that's in the hour you're thinking of. So if you're thinking of 12 o'clock, you can look at that. If you're thinking of 3 o'clock, you look at that card. Uh, if you're thinking of 5 o'clock, you can look at that card. 6 o'clock, that card. You get the idea? Yeah. But before you do that, I'm going to make another prediction. Um, uh, I'm going to make a prediction of the... Of the uh, of the card that you're going to get. There we go. So I've made that prediction. I'm going to squidge that into a little ball. I'm going to put that in there. So I've made my two predictions. And each time I made my prediction before we did anything, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know what hour you're thinking of. For the first time, tell me the hour. Five. Five. So it's 12, one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? Yeah. I'm going to look at it. I've made my prediction, so I'm going to look at it now. We're all going to look at it. The eight of spades. Okay. Is that fair? If you thought of a different hour, you would have got a completely different card yes? yes now before we did any of this i made two predictions do you remember yes. i made these two predictions at the very beginning the first prediction i predicted the hour and i predicted the hour before you did anything before you told anyone do you remember yes. the second prediction i predicted the card yes. now let me show you this let me just open these what was the hour you were thinking of again Five. and if you look here you can see time Fifth hour. I predicted that you would think of the fifth hour. And then the card is the eight of spades. And I predicted that you would pick the eight of spades. If you'd had a different hour, it would have been a different time. Yeah. But that was the only choice that you had. That card right there, that was the only choice. If it had six o'clock, it would have been blank. Four o'clock, three o'clock. Any other time would have been blank. If you had any other of these cards, it would have been blank. Because every card, take the cards out that you were holding on to and pass them to me. If you'd had any of those cards, they would have been blank, blank. Because every card in this pack is blank. Except for the five of spades, which is the card that you picked. And that is absolutely, completely and totally a miracle. It can all be examined. So I want to talk to you now about a routine called Do Not Get Confused. Now this is in Woody's book and it's uh, a packet trick. You don't expect Woody Aragon to do packet tricks but it's a packet trick and he actually talks in the book about how this is one of his favourite openers and how he'll open a lot of the time with this trick. And what Woody does is he brings out a deck of cards, he brings out the, the packet of cards that he uses to do the routine he does this and it's over in like literally a minute and then he puts the uh, the packet away and he goes into whatever he's doing with the regular deck of cards or with the deck of cards that he's got in front of him uh now i'd completely forgotten about this trick i remember it's one of those 
tricks that I, I looked at when I was looking at the book initially, and then I kind of glossed over it. I thought, oh, that looks interesting. I'll get back to that. And it's one that I never got back to. And it was only recently when I was interviewing Woody for a Talk Magic interview on, on, um, um, on, on Talk Magic that I, he actually performed this on me. And I was like, my gosh, that is so good. Is that unpublished, Woody? And he's like, no, it's in Book of English. I'm like, how did I miss that? And then I went back to it and I was like, oh yeah, I remember glossing over this. But this is incredibly strong. Now he is right. This makes a great opener because so much magic happens in such a very short period of time. And it's perfect for like a walk around thing because you don't need a table. You literally just have three cards, you take them out and, uh, and you'll see the performance in a second, but you just take three cards out and you ask them to look at the three cards and watch the three cards. Cards are turning face down, cards are turning face up. And I look, I like the hook line to this. This trick is called do not get confused. And, and you kind of lead to the audience and say, look, let me show you the most confusing card trick you'll ever see. And then all of this stuff's happening. And just when they think that some the cards are in a particular way, they change and then they change again. And just when all of this visual moments of magic has happened, you finish off by having the entire three cards turn blank, not only on the face, but also on the back. Now, the one negative to this is once you've had the three cards turn blank, you can't have them examined. But to be honest, the way that Woody performs this and the way that I've started performing this, it doesn't make any difference that they can't be examined because you're doing this very quickly as an opener to establish credibility. And I've said this on the channel before. We've all been there where you have someone pick a card and they go, oh, I've seen this one before. They're not going to say that with this. In a minute, in a minute, which is probably how long it takes to do this trick, you've got, uh, you've got appearances, you've got cards being reversed you've got you've got cards changing there's so much magic happening in a very short period of time and then when they all turn blank it's incredible and then I just put them away and go well you know what let's let's do something with a full deck can you take these cards and shuffle them before they have time to think about can I examine those cards you're on to the next thing now if that's an issue for you you can use a Himber wallet you can use a Himber envelope of course so you can put the cards away and then leave them on the table and have them examined there's lots of different ways of dealing with it but to be honest don't run if you're not being chased this is not the sort of routine where people are going to want to examine it but it's an incredible trick I've actually done it on social media I've done it on my Instagram channel because it is quick it is visual and uh, yeah it's, it's, it's just very easy to do as well. All you need is an Ascani on spread and a, um, and, and a frustration count and you're good to go. So if you want a really cool packet trick to put into your repertoire, check it out. It's, uh, it's, it's in the Book of English, so you can learn it directly from there. So uh, I've got Sarah behind the camera. You're going to help me with this. Is that okay, Sarah? Yeah. I've got three cards. Uh, and if I spread them out, can you see them? I've got a Jack of Diamonds, a Queen of Diamonds, and a King of Diamonds. Yeah. Now, the trick is with the Jack of Diamonds, but this trick is very confusing, so try not to get confused. The trick is with the Jack of Diamonds. Do you see it there? Yeah. If I just take these three cards and twist, what happens is in between the other two cards, that Jack of Diamonds actually turns face down. So you see the Queen, you see the King, the Jack of Diamonds is actually turned face down. But this is the confusing part. If I said to you which card has turned face down, you would, of course, say... The Jack. The Jack. And, and in honesty, it's not the Jack. It's actually the Queen. You can see the Jack's face up. You can see the King's face up. It's the Queen that's face down. So if I said to you which card is face down, you would say... The Queen. queen. Of course you would. But the thing is, there's not a single card that's face down. They're all face up. Yeah. Now, we've done it with the Queen. We've done it with the Jack. Watch the King. You see, if I just do this... All I have to do is snap my fingers, and when I do, that king turns face down as well. It's very confusing, but would you like to know how it works? Yeah. It's all in your imagination. It's not real. What I mean by that is if I just do this, you can see, uh, just like that, that all three cards don't have faces. They don't have backs. All I have here are three blank cards, and that is why this is one of the most confusing tricks in the world. Okay, so the next routine I want to talk to you about is the cheerleader... Um, which is, well, it just fooled Sarah. You're about to see the performance. I've just performed it to Sarah. Sarah, you told me it fooled you, right? Hardly anything, hardly anything fooled Sarah. It fooled her. Uh, so what this trick is, basically, it's a spelling trick. But the way it's framed makes it really interesting because normally with a spelling trick is you openly say to them, right, okay, you're going to spell out the name of the card and, and, and the card appears right there. This is a very fair procedure because it doesn't feel like you could possibly know what the card is, let alone where it is. 
and and it's very hands off you know that you're hardly touching the deck they put the card back they gather up all of the cards they cut the deck you'll see there's a moment in the routine where i cut the deck but they're meant to cut the deck at that point i didn't do it that way because sarah's behind the camera and then you've got this psychic spelling routine where you have them think of the name of the card and you spell it or they can they can deal it and you can say stop hang on a second you've just spelt the first, you've just spelt the, the value of the card haven't you right and it's it really is very engaging it in my opinion it takes the spelling trick to the next level because you're still doing a spelling trick but you're doing it in a way that it feels like you're actually grabbing the information out of the spectator's head and if you're into this sort of thing you're left with a regular deck of cards uh, or you can instantly reset because uh, there is a small setup that takes about 10 seconds to set up you're instantly reset if you want to do this trick again immediately or you're left with a regular deck let's look at the performance Okay, Sarah, we're going to try and do something here. We're going to do some psychic cheerleading. When you were younger, were you ever a cheerleader? No. No. Did you ever want to be a cheerleader? No. Well, we're going to do some psychic cheerleading. Deck of cards, they're all there, they're all different. Is that fair? Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, would you like to shuffle or do you want me to give them a quick shuffle? No, you can shuffle, I can see. Cool. Uh, I'm going to get the deck and divide it into roughly about uh well i want to try and make them as even as possible but it doesn't have to be exact but we're going to go as close as possible to four piles is that cool yeah cool uh so we've got four piles from a shuffle deck of cards that's pile one two three four what i want you to do is name a pile one two three four three three and i'll push it forward and another pile one one we'll push that one forward so that leaves us with two piles i'm going to hold them here i'm going to drop one and hold on to one which one do you want me to drop uh, my right hand or my left hand? Maybe. Your right hand. You want me to drop the right hand? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Okay. So that leaves us with this pile. Do me a favour, take the cards, give them a shuffle. Mix them up. And when you've mixed them up, take the cards and spread them so you can see all the cards and I can't. And what I want you to do is take one of those cards and think of one. Okay. You got one? Yeah. Remember the card, obviously. Now take that card, you can put it back on any one of these three piles. It's up to you which one. Uh, just put the card back on any one of these three piles. Very good, and then shuffle the cards that you've got left in your hand, and then drop them on top. Of the one I put now? Yeah, absolutely, so we're burying it. And what we'll do is we'll just, we'll do that. Now that's fair, right? You can see, would you like me to cut, or do you want to cut? Are you, are you, yes, no. Okay, you could. At this point, you can have the spectator cut as many times as they want to. You don't have to touch the deck at that point. Sarah's behind the camera, so I'm gonna cut for her. But it's important that you understand at that point that you, the spectator, doesn't even you don't even have to do anything anyway you're thinking of a card you buried it into the deck there's no way i can know what it is right yeah you're going to spell to that card in your imagination you're not going to say it out loud we're going to try and do some psychic cheerleading here now we're going to start off with the value you know the value of, a, of cards yeah. we're going to we're going to spell the value i want you to spell the value in your head and i'm going to try and spell it along with you so whatever the value is like if it was an ace you'd go a c e you get the idea yeah spell the value spell the value spell the value Stop. There's four letters in that value, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Think about this. You could have picked any card. You could have picked any card. You didn't write it down. You didn't tell anyone. You literally looked through and had any card you wanted to. And just by listening to your thoughts, I was able to work out how the, how the value was actually spelt. Now we need to put of, obviously. Now let's, now let's go for the suit. I want you to spell the suit in your head as well. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. That's it, isn't it? It's five letters. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, if you're counting the S at the end, that's six letters, but we're not counting the S. Right. Yeah. Um, for the first time, what was the name of your card? Five of Hearts. Are you sure? Yes. That's crazy. Do you know why that's crazy? No. Because I have here the Five of Hearts. Okay, I want to take some time out now, not to perform a trick for you, but to give... Uh, the book of English or a book in English a review and uh, this this first came out in Spanish and then uh, got translated to English I think it's been reprinted like three or four times now it is available through all good magic dealers when you have people like Eric Jones giving you a quote saying Woody Aragon has officially raised the bar anyone worth their salt as a magician needs to have this book in their library well that says it all in fact I remember going to one of the very early session conventions that Eric Jones was at and he was in the bar blowing people away with routines from this book and one of the routines he was doing was a routine that I actually 
actually did on the Wizard product review when I reviewed this probably a decade ago, which is a routine where you have four cards and you get people to follow along with you uh, and you have them torn in half and then they throw away pieces and then they shuffle them and they end up with the two cut pieces of card left have fused together. Uh, or have matched and it's, it's a really baffling trick I've actually done it on stage when I've had I've given everybody in the audience four playing cards and I've had them follow along with me and it's an incredible moment when everybody does it and they all find that their pieces match but this is a routine that I've seen so many virtual performers do um, throughout um, throughout lockdown I've, I've, I've watched lots of magicians do virtual shows and just off the top of my head people like uh, Michael J Fitch Jane Josh uh, Etty and Pradia, they all did uh, routines. Uh, they all did this routine, but with different things. It, and the nice thing about that is you don't have to use playing cards. You can use like a picture of yourself or whatever it may be. Anyway, that's really good. Um, there are so many amazing routines in here. So the book is divided into a few different sections. And the first section is slight. So it's all on different slights. Uh, that Woody has created throughout the years. Uh, an interesting slide that's well worth looking at is something called the Separation, which is a way of showing a deck of cards and separating the cards out, either into red or black, or uh, separating maybe odds and evens, however you want to do it. It's a very clever way of actually separating a deck of cards just in the action of showing them. And he's got several routines that use that. Um, then, uh, and there's so many different moves um, in the move section. Once you've got through the move section, you're then into tricks with any deck of cards, which is, uh, and a lot of the stuff here is very easy to do. There's no skill involved in it at all. There are some routines that require setups, um, which isn't a problem. That's that's fine. He's not really using many stack uh, stack stuff. He's got different books where he talks about stacks, but he is he is using some routines that do require a setup. Uh, I'm going to perform this for you later on, but uh, his ACAM is especially good. Then he goes, and there's quite a few poker demonstrations in there. Now, anybody who watches this channel will know I'm not a big fan of poker demonstrations, but if you are, there's some great poker demonstrations in there. Um, then he goes into routines that require a special card. So that might be a blank card or a double blank card or a double-faced card or whatever it may be. Uh, but there's quite a few routines in there that require special special cards and then after that he goes into routines that require maths uh and done in a very interesting way uh, he's got a lot of work on uh, uh pharaoh shuffles and he's got this thing called the permanent deck principle which is a very interesting concept um so yeah and then there's a whole bunch of stuff at the back he's got some stuff with the guilt breath principle this is a great book not a lot of it is difficult. There's not a lot of routines that require really complicated moves. Like I said to the intro to this video, it's more about the subtleties uh, that he employs and the routining that he employs. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can learn from Woody Aragon, which is, you know, for the move monkeys out there, yeah, it's great to be able to do the latest super duper flourishy move, whatever it may be. But sometimes you can fool an audience just by using subtleties and by using clever routining. And uh, for commercial workers, people that actually go out and perform commercially, this book is worth its weight in gold. And you know what? I don't see many people doing the routines out this book. Outside of the first trick, which is the torn card, which I see everyone doing, outside of that, a lot of other people don't really use the material in this book. And it's such a shame, which one of the reasons why I wanted to do a five by five and highlight how amazing this book is. So if I was going to give this book a review, I would give it 100%. And I would say it's absolutely worth its weight in gold. If you are, if you are an amateur or a hobbyist or a professional, if you have any interest in cards at all and you want to add some awesome routines into your repertoire, you want to get a book in English by Woody Aragon. Highly recommend it. Right, so now we're going to be looking at a routine called Never Tell Them What's Going to Happen. And this is an ACAN. It's one of Woody's ACANs. Woody's created so many ACANs over the years, but this is Woody, one of Woody's uh, Any Card at Any Numbers that's got a very different method. I've never seen this method before. Um, it's quite unique. Uh, I've just filmed the performance. It involves having a few people 
because I've got Ryan in the theatre to help me with this particular trick. And um, the, the name of the trick, never tell them what's going to happen, that's related to the presentation behind the trick, which is you openly tell people at the beginning, hey, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, even though a magician is not meant to do that. And then you go into this routine. Um, it's very different. You have to justify the procedure. Uh, I know that there's going to be some people that are watching this that maybe don't like the procedure, um, but the procedure behind it, it all makes sense. It all makes logical sense. Basically, you have different members of the audience shout out values. And then you have one person say, look, lots of people have shouted out values. Which one would you like to go for? And then you take all the other values and that creates the number. So it's a way of randomly creating a number and randomly creating a, uh, a, uh, a card. It all seems very fair and it is very fair. But the procedure allows you to get to a position where you put the deck down on the table and you almost don't have to do anything. And the performance you're about to see, that's exactly what happened. I put the deck down on the table. I didn't need to do anything. Now, sometimes when you do this, you might need to shift a couple of cards um, one way or another, um, depending on the values that people name. Um, but that's not very often that you have to do that. A lot of the time you can engineer it so you get the outcome that I showed you just then. Um, it's very different, but it really plays big. And as I say, from, from the point of view of uh, an ACAN, you barely have to touch the deck. Unless you're in a situation where you have to shift a couple of the cards, you barely touch the deck. And although I did the dealing, you can actually get the spectators to do the dealing as well. Never shown this to a lot of magicians and no one's ever seen it before. Uh, and it's a really clever method. I'm going to perform this for you right now. Right, I'm here with Ryland and Thea. Say hi, guys. Hi. We've also got your mom, Sarah, behind the camera. So um, there's a golden rule in magic, Thea, and the golden rule is you never tell the audience what's going to happen before it happens. Because if I tell you, you're going to be watching very carefully. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm going to do a classic of magic called the Any Card at Any Number. And the whole idea is that a particular card is going to end up at a particular place in the deck. Now, we're going to do this in a very random way because a lot of the time, if you ask someone to name a number, psychologically, they name the same number or similar numbers numbers every time. Likewise, with a playing card, a lot of people name like an ace of spades. You would probably name a queen of hearts if I asked you to name a card. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to make it completely random. Uh, and we're going to start off by thinking of the suit. Now, there's four suits in the deck of cards. There's clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. So, Ryland, name a suit for me. Clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds? Hearts. You sure? Yeah. Okay. That is absolutely perfect. Um, now, we're going we're gonna, to um, create a value at random. So I'll tell you what, Ryland, uh, there's 13 values in the deck of cards. They go from ace, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, which is 11, queen, which is 12, and king, which is 13. Name a value for me. Seven. Seven. Fantastic. Let's get another one. Name a value for me, Thea. Six. Okay, so we've got seven, we've got six. Sarah, name a value for me. Um, nine. Okay, so we've got seven, six, nine. And we'll go for one more value. Sarah, why don't you... Perform double duty here and name another value. Um, three. Three. So we've got so we've got nine, we've got seven, we've got six, we've got three. Are you happy with those values? Yeah. Now, all of the decision making here is going to be with you, Thea. Between us, we said nine, seven, six, and three. Which one of those four values would you like the card to be? Nine, seven, six, or three? She wants it to be six, your number. Okay, so, and you said hearts, didn't you? So we've got the six of hearts. Now, the other three values was seven and nine, or seven and three. Seven and three is 10, plus nine 19. is 19. The other three values that you guys randomly named come to 13. Is that right? Yeah. So, 13, 19. 19, sorry. 19, and you said the six of hearts. Yeah? Yeah. Check this out. 19. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Right there. And what was the card that you said, Thea? It was the six of hearts, wasn't it? 19th position. You guys made all the decisions. And over there is the six of hearts. 
So there you go, guys. That's another 5x5 in the bag. Thank you very much for Woody Aragon for all of the stuff that you've done for Magic, all of the routines that you've created. He is a genuinely nice guy, and my advice is support him and buy all of his books and all of his products. He is amazing. Anyway, if you want to see another Woody Aragon 5x5, please let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. That really helps. And I'm going to be back again tomorrow at... Uh, uh, three videos. Two o'clock, we're going to do a short. Six o'clock, we're going to do a magic live. And at nine o'clock, we're going to be back with a talk magic. So I'm going to see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.